Thanks very much, Katie. And thank you very much both to Jason and to Paz uh, for two excellent presentations. Um, I hope what we're kind of really leaning towards here is both a broader vision of some of the questions and, and directions that short form training can go into, as well as now an opportunity to look at different methodological approaches. So really cool to hear about this reflexive uh, TA approach. And then we're going to show you a mixed methods approach that we've used in a recent assessment that we've done of CSEC's flagship training course, Scientific Community Engagement Fundamentals. So Camille, our Director of Learning, and myself are going to co-present this. We're going to be taking it in turns with the slides. Um, and I want to acknowledge that this was also a team effort. So Maya on our team contributed to uh, the data analysis, and Katie has been helping us to prepare the final report. That's going to be published probably next week. Uh, we're just putting the final touches on that, uh, and we'll be sharing it around and are happy to have a deeper dive into the results once the report is published if folks want to get really into the data together in a future call. Okay, so with that said, um, let's start off with a little bit of background and context for why we decided to do this medium term assessment of the impact of scientific community engagement fundamentals. So we have been running CEF, as we call uh, community engagement fundamentals for short, um, 16 times now. We've had 16 cohorts of this course graduate since uh, mm -hmm. committee designed it back in 2020. And two of those cohorts were pr uh, private cohorts that we hosted for CZI. Uh, and we've also done another private cohort uh, for Australian Biocommons and their collaborators. So most of these have been general registration cohorts uh, with three private cohorts to date. And right from the outset, we had been doing exit surveys uh, at the point of graduation. So after graduation, uh, folks were sent a link to an exit survey, and, and that survey has remained fairly consistent over time. So we've had these snapshots of data about what folks feel about the course at that point of graduation, but we hadn't previously had the opportunity to then follow up and see whether the immediate impacts that they were reporting were actually sustained or indeed uh, what they went on to do with what they learned. So really thinking about what uh, Jason was talking about in terms of catalytic learning and, and uh, where uh, a training can uh, take you in the long term. So we've been really fortunate that CZI has funded uh, this medium term assessment that we're going to uh, present today. And we were able to reach back to all of our learners and invite them to participate in this study. So what we're going to present today uh, is some of the background about how we structured the research. So how we designed the survey instrument, uh, how many folks participated and a snapshot of some of the findings. And then if we have time during the Q&A, Camille and I are very happy to uh, enable you to choose your own adventure and go into a little bit more detail about some of the key themes that emerged. But there's a lot here. You're going to see uh, when you see the 42 page report when it's published uh, next week that there's an absolute goldmine of data here. So thank you very, very much to everybody who completed the survey. We're really, really grateful for how much information we have gained. And so um, I think all of you on the call already know about CSCCE and uh, who we are and what we do. And so this is just to emphasize that because we are really working to professionalize and institutionalize this role of the community engagement manager, so the human infrastructure that's really vital for collaboration in STEM, training is one of our uh, kind of foundational pillars, if you like. It's one of the ways uh, that we are supporting uh, community managers whatever their job title. So it's really important to us to know whether or not our trainings are actually having long-term impact. Okay, uh, Camille is then going to tell us more about the course. Thanks, Lou. Yeah, so briefly, I um, just want to give an overview of what Scientific Community Engagement Fundamentals, or CEF, is um, for those who are not familiar. So this is our flagship course for community managers. And it is an eight week online course, and we've designed it to uh, be responsive to both brand new community managers or folks who have been doing community management for a while, but who perhaps have never had any kind of formal training or support to really give them a set of actionable skills and strategies for improving their, their community, manage, community management skills. 
And so the way the course is structured is we have two 90 minute sessions each week and we mix up sort of lecture style content with a series of activities, discussion questions, reading assignments. Um, and we have uh, slightly skewed that. So the lecture kind of takes place earlier on in the week. Um, and then there's more co-working on course assignments during the second session of the week. Um, but at its core, we're really interested in providing community managers in STEM a, a shared vocabulary um, so they can leave the course uh, describing their community purpose with greater clarity, um, feeling like they can go ahead and refine and create strategic programming that's going to be really responsive to their community members' needs and goals, and also help them think through how they can lower barriers that may be um, pro preventing folks from participating within their communities to the extent that they would like to. So just to emphasize here, CEF is really quite a high touch course. So it requires quite a lot of uh, facilitator hours to uh, scaffold out the activities uh, in the course. And there's a lot of customization that happens along the way uh, in terms of um, pairing folks up very intentionally in terms of who they work with in their breakout groups um, and facilitating things uh, like informal coffee chats so that there's really uh, an opportunity to get to know other people within uh, the co uh, and so community managers can find others working on similar things to them. So there's this um, high touch scaffolding that we provide. So we provide a lot of welcome documentation. We don't assume everybody knows how to use all the tech tools that we're using. So we have quick start guides for the uh, various tools that we use. Um, and then we're also really keen to promote individual agency, right? So it's very important that uh, when you're participating in a learning experience that you feel very welcome to make choices uh, about how you're moving through that learning experience, that you know that you can ask questions and that you're thinking very actively about how to apply what you learn back in your own context. And really, we're intending to bridge theory and practice here. So as Camille was already teeing up, um, we are introducing these core frameworks and this core vocabulary, but we don't just want to learn about those frameworks um, just because we're interested in them. We want uh, folks to be able to go and apply those directly to what they're doing in their day to day work. And so the activities uh, that we uh, scaffold during the course are very much intended uh, at application. Uh, we're also in hosting the course, modeling community management practices ourselves. So building things like an onboarding pathway is the kind of thing that community managers are thinking about when they're welcoming folks into their own community and providing how-to documentation or providing multiple different ways to facilitate a conversation are all ideas and specific tools uh, that community managers can then take back and adapt in their own work. But importantly, it's not all about um, us presenting ideas. You know, learning also happens in interacting with each other, uh, with learners being able to uh, reflect on um, the, the work that they're doing and learn from the lived and real experience of everyone else in the room. So breakout groups, uh, silent docking in virtual notes docs, uh, co-working on specific activities and, and presenting out examples are all an important part of how we learn together. All right, so just kind of zooming out a little bit, we wanted to share one slide on our kind of general approach to learning design at CSCP. So CEF is just one of many different um, training offerings that we offer. And it's really this five-step process that really underpins how we think about designing our various trainings. So um, we start first, of course, by research. And this is not only just researching the, the topics that we suspect that we want to cover in our training offerings, but really researching the, the needs of our prospective participants, right? So this involves starting with surveys and interviews to really have a deep understanding of learner needs and the different contexts where they will be applying um, whatever they learn in these different training experiences, as well as other um, perspectives. So what do supervisors say? What are funders saying? Um, so we have a real holistic um, sense of perspectives that is going to inform um, the content and design of the course. So that research stage usually results in some sort of report 
that we then use to inform our design. So the second stage is all about starting to hone in on specific learning outcomes that we know that we want the course to achieve overall. And we can do um, a series of exercises um, using this tool called the strategy blueprint to really make sure that the activities and uh, assessment and other course outputs are going to be really aligned with the, the member needs that we identified in the research stage. Um, then we move on to actually developing the course. So this is where Lou and I are, you know, in the lesson plan docs, making slides. Um, we often will go back and refer to the strategy blueprints and the, the research that we had conducted. It's kind of an iterative um, approach, more iterative than maybe this graphic represents. Um, to, to design activities that are going to really support our learners with overcoming the challenges that um, we identified in the design and research stage. Finally, or next we move on to implementing. So uh, at CSCCE, we always pilot a course. So the, the first course, we're always very clear with our um, participants that it's a pilot um, and we try our best to make real-time adjustments whenever possible. So if we're getting feedback, um, via formative assessments that we conduct during the course, we try and integrate that feedback um, in, in subsequent sessions. Um, so we produce live trainings um, like CEF, and we also produce materials that are um, shared on our learning management system. And finally, we evaluate. So as Lou was saying, in our introduction, um, historically, this has looked like uh, exit surveys that we share immediately after folks uh, graduate our, our course or finish a workshop. And um, we always summarize those results and share that uh, report back to, to learners and encourage additional feedback beyond that. Um, but the, pres the, the report that we're presenting today is really an opportunity to take a closer look at the broader effects or impact, as well as the long to medium, medium to long term effects, which is something we haven't had um, the resources to to measure uh, before. So this is really exciting um, development in terms of our evaluation stage. All right, so moving on to just talking a little bit about our methods for this assessment. So we were really interested in five research questions. And so um, these research questions were all about trying to determine impact, not just at the individual learner level, but um, we were interested to see whether and how um, folks who took community engagement fundamentals were actually using concepts, frameworks, and activities um, to, to make improvements at their communities or organizations and um, to maybe build relationships with the broader STEM ecosystem um, more effectively. So um, our first research question was, of course, just have folks use the stuff that we talked about, right? So have folks actually applied what, what, we, what we taught? Um, so we had a series of questions uh, to explore what folks have used in their roles and how. Um, and then questions two through four really get at this impact across levels. So question two was how did CEF, um, what if any impact did CEF have on participants as individuals? And here we were particularly interested in more socio-emotional outcomes such as confidence level, um, as well as maybe career related outcomes. Question three, we asked about um, the impact that the course had on participants, communities, and organizations, particularly member participation, um, as that is usually a, a key reason why folks are taking the course to begin with. They're, they're looking for strategies and tactics to, to improve member um, engagement. And four was all about understanding whether CEF had any effect on the organization's and community's relationship to the broader STEM ecosystem. And finally, we were also interested in what else folks have found useful. So we had some questions at the end about additional resources, activities, or trainings that participants have found useful. So again, just highlighting that these questions were intended to explore the impact of learning across these three different levels, um, and not just kind of course outputs, but more affective impacts um, as confidence levels, as I had already mentioned. 
Okay, so how did we tee this up? So um, we designed um, a survey that we used to uh, look into these five uh, research questions, and we sent this out to all graduates of Community Engagement Fundamentals. Now, we stressed that the survey was anonymous, and nobody was asked to give us their name uh, while completing the survey, and uh, we informed them that only CSEC staff would have access to the raw responses. There were lots of opportunities to answer open-ended questions, and we really wanted folks to be able to speak candidly. So we sent this out to all 285 CEF alumni uh, at the time, both directly via email and in the uh, private cohorts in Slack that they had each had uh, while taking the course, and all alumni were contacted at least twice. So the survey, survey itself consisted of 29 questions, um, and it was expected to take between 15 to 20 minutes to complete. So we know folks are always really busy. And so as an incentive to persist through the 15 minutes, uh, we also um, offered the opportunity to be entered into a raffle uh, to win a free workshop place. So uh, we designed the survey in such a way that when you completed it, it gave you a code uh, and you could submit that code to be entered into the raffle. Um, sorry, I was just like, I'm still blown away that so many people filled this out. So thank you to everyone who did fill it out. So um, yeah, a little bit about the survey design itself. So um, we mentioned earlier, this is a mixed methods survey. So it included a mix of questions really intended to explore how folks have applied um, different concepts, frameworks, and activities from the course and the impact that um, that application has had. So this looked like a mix of Likert scale questions, multiple choice questions, and optional open-ended questions. So the Likert scale questions were really um, kind of written in a way to determine degree of agreement. So they were often um, posed as statements, and then there was an option to indicate how much the respondent agreed or disagreed with that statement. So for example, as a result of taking community engagement fundamentals, I felt more and then we would have some prompts that folks could um, state their levels of agreement. The multiple choice questions um, were intended to provide a, a bunch of different outcomes that folks could choose from. And we always had an, um, an other option. So if folks wanted to write in a response that wasn't already there, um, they could do that. And the idea was that, you know, we knew the survey was long, um, but we want so we wanted to make sure that we were designing the survey in such a way that it wasn't going to be very onerous to to fill out. Um, so we wanted folks to not have to recall specific materials and activities. Um, so instead, listed those all out in the prompts. Um, so then fo folks could really focus on the outcome or their or agree or to to what extent they agreed or disagreed with the statement, rather than trying to remember um, what the course was, since some of the folks had taken this over two years ago. <laughs> So um, the optional open-ended questions were really intended to be an opportunity for, for folks to share stories that demonstrate um, some of the nuance in how they might have responded to some of those closed-ended questions. So we were really hoping to get a lot of examples that demonstrate um, the not just the use of different concepts um, from the course, but the impact that it had. So what this looked like was uh, six different sections. Um, so these were basically in alignment with our research questions. So um, we had a, a demographic section to learn more about the folks who were responding, um, but the additional sections align almost perfectly to the, the five research questions that I shared earlier. Um, yeah, so I won't go over this because I think it's basically very similar. So we have one results summary slide. Um, which we can go into greater detail in our Q&As, but I'm going to go over this briefly just to give you a very high level of the results. So 95% um, of the folks who responded have applied multiple CEF concepts, frameworks, and activities. Um, and they use those concepts, frameworks, and activities in um, some common ways. So 68.6% said that they use them to improve their overall community strategy. Uh, 67 said to improve existing content or programming, and 64 said to develop new content or programming. And 55.8% um, said that they use these concepts to build alignment with their other team members, which um, is something that we'd be happy to talk about a little bit more because that we found particularly interesting. 
So on an individual level, um, the vast majority of respondents reported positive socio-emotional outcomes. So we were really pleased to see that 87% said that they felt in, in they had an increased level of confidence um, and 90% said they felt better connected to their peers. Um, going to the community and organizational level, 74% of respondents said that they noted at least one improvement in member participation within their communities, and 51% said, said that they had experienced multiple improvements. Um, and we actually were able to use one of our frameworks, the CSEC community participation model, um, so for folks to describe the, the nature of those improvements, which um, again, we can explore in greater detail. 79% um, said that they saw uh, multiple additional improvements beyond member engagement. So um, they reported improvements in scaffolding that they're able to offer community members um, and uh, improvements to their community engagement strategy as an organization. And then finally, at the ecosystem level, 38% of respondents reported multiple improvements in how their organization um, was in relation to the broader STEM ecosystem. So this looked like things improved, like improved communication with other uh, stakeholders or other communities in the, a similar kind of space, um, more clarity about how their community fits within the broader STEM ecosystem, and even some new collaborations with other organizations or communities. So yeah, um, that brings us to some key themes. So as with any research project, we have um, lots of thoughts and things that we wanna follow up with. So I'm gonna hand it back to Lou to talk about the first theme. Okay, so what I'm gonna do actually is skip through these cause I'm kind of mindful of the time and wanna make sure we've got time for Q and A. But if folks wanna go into more detail, um, we can absolutely talk about how the specific curriculum design uh, we think has supported the outcomes that we have seen. Uh, and as I've said, we're very uh, eager and willing to do a deeper dive call into some of the actual results. But let's not take time away from uh, the Q&A and everybody else uh, getting an opportunity to chat. So I just want to make sure that we acknowledge uh, everyone on the team that contributed to this and to say thank you to CZI for funding the work. We're really thrilled to have been able to actually look at this uh, methodically and in much more detail. Uh, and the data is going to give us lots to think about for some time to come. So thank you very much.